Hi everyone, David Bronschenkel here. Welcome back to the channel. And I just want to take a moment to thank everyone for all the likes and comments and all the new subscribers uh, that came along after the last video on why I was taking the risk of chasing my dream and why I was going to fish the Division 3 of the Bassmaster Opens for 2024. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at my boat. Uh, it's an older boat and it's been a pretty stable platform for me. So let's check it out and see what we're dealing with for the tournament season. So there she is, my 2000 Ranger 520 DX. Bassmaster Classic Limited to Edition with a 225 horse Mercury. It's a, just a solid boat for me for the last nine years. And I, I can't. This was a boat that I dreamed about when I first got started in tournaments because it was pretty much a boat to have around in my area. It seemed like everyone had it, or that, or a Skeeter. ZX225 was also popular back in the day when I first started. So let's go check her out and see what we're dealing with here. So starting in the back here is uh, my 2015 225 horse Mercury Optimax Pro XS that I had to uh, buy brand new after owning this boat for two weeks because the previous owner had the original Optimax that was on here rebuilt and somebody didn't rebuild it properly and it blew up on me, which sucked. But we got, it. so we went and invested a brand new motor back when I bought this boat nine years ago. And it's been fairly reliable ever since. We got it mounted to a six inch Bob's Machine Shop hydraulic jack plate. With that set up, I can, on a normal tournament day, I can run 67, 68 miles an hour. In the spring and fall, when the water temperatures and air temperatures are cooler, I can hit 70. Which is plenty fast enough for me anyways. Uh, for shallow water anchors, we got the OGs in the game. The power pole, two 8 foot power pole blades. Moving up to the console units, we got two Hummingbird Helix 12s, Gen 2s, Mega SIs. I normally just use this one here for side imaging and the other one here for my mapping in 2D. Uh, I don't normally, I don't like running down imaging for some reason. I'm just not good at it. But uh, for, we got our blinker style trim and tilt for both the jack plate and the motor itself. And we got a hot foot down there along with a bunch of wiring that we'll have to fix up and tidy up before the start of the year. Uh, as for mounts, we got the one mounted to a balls out mount, six inch, bolted down. And as you can see, I'm moving the boat before the, anything else budges. And then for the other unit, we got a homemade bracket that me and a buddy made up and we painted. And it's, of course, you can see bolted down through, bolt through the console as well. So that, yeah, like the other one. You're removing the boat before anything else gives on that. Moving up to the bow electronics. For a trolling motor, we're running a 12 or 52 inch Minn Kota Altrex. I've always been a fan of the longer shaft trolling motors just because I like fishing out deep and I went the extra length allows me to stay out in rougher water. For electronics up front, we're running a Gen 1 Hummingbird Helix 10, for, mainly just for mapping but also as a backup unit if I need to use my side imaging up front here. Hummingbird Helix 12 Gen 4 that I just purchased this last fall along with the Mega 360. That, that's what that unit is mainly for. For a bracket, we got it, I got it mounted to a bracket that a buddy of mine, once again, homemade deal uh, because I'm a, I'm a tight wad and don't like spending money 400 bucks where I don't have to the only thing is for this year is we're probably going to go back and redesign this bracket make it a little bit sturdier because again we are dealing with Lake St. Clair and Leech Lake that have been known for to rip electronics off when it gets rough out 
Uh, so we're definitely going to be redoing the bracket. Of course, bolt through. Everything's got to be bolt through in my mind. Otherwise, stuff gets ripped off. We're also running a nine inch Garmin 93 SV for my live scope unit. As much as I hate live scope for bass fishing, I'd rather I'd rather not do it, but in this day and age, you have to, unfortunately, especially on Lake St. Clair, where that's pretty much going to be nothing but live scoping. Uh, got that attached to a, the big, long, extra long uh, ram mount, bolt through. For transducers on the trolling mower, we got the standard Hummingbird SI transducer. This one here I just mainly use as a backup for in case something happens to my Mega 360 and the live scope unit. So it doesn't get, actually get played, but it's just it's there for just in case. Uh, we're still running the LVS 32 transducer because as luck would have it, I bought my Garmin unit set up and the, like six months later, they came out with the LVS 34. So I wasn't going to spend extra money and upgrade it. Got it mounted to a perspective mount. I just bought that last fall just to play around with it. And I I actually enjoy it on this mount here more than on the head of the trolling mower itself. Except for when I'm going and uh, going fish slop with frogs and whatnot. Then it's kind of a pain in the butt. On the front deck, we got a recessed trolling mower plate that the previous owner put in. It's not the brand that I would have wanted, and it's not in the position that I would have liked. But it is what it is. It's it's nothing. I I can't do anything about it right now, unless I were to go and refiberglass, do some fiberglass work and whatnot. So it it's it's worked fine for the last nine years and. That's where it's going to stay. I got my power pole stomp switches right next to it. I know some guys like to put them up on the corners. That that just bothers me. When I'm working a trolling motor and I need to use them or put them up or put them down, it's a lot faster for me to just go right there or right there instead of having to go way up there. Other than that, I really like the big deck on these older 520s. It's been comfortable enough for me and my Wednesday night partners to stand up here and fish, as well as my team partner will fish up here side by side. Not an issue with rods. Two big rod lockers for my rods. The only thing I don't like about them is in this particular one, it's got the rod tubes in. I've been debating about whether or not I want to rip them out. But that'll be for another, that might be the project here yet. I got my five port ethernet box for the hummingbirds located in here, as well as the black box for the panoptics, which I got tidy up and finish game mounted and all that fun jazz. Center tackle storage, nice and big, goes all the way up to the trolling mower pedal. I, I haul a lot of stuff in here. Probably won't do as much when, uh, on St. Clair, I won't need everything in here, fortunately, so I can cut down the weight. If you're wondering why I got, why my lid is the way it is with the fiberglass in piece of plywood, the previous owner had, had cracked the lid and I up, his solution was just putting a big uh, one and a half inch board across the crack. Well, I didn't care for that, so I, and I didn't have the money at the time to order some aluminum aluminum lids from Ranger Mike on off of Facebook. He's the guy to go to for Ranger lids when you do want to replace them. But I didn't have the money for that, so I just bought some 3 8 uh, plywood, fiberglass, gutted out the old composite foam type stuff that they had in between, sandwiched in between that and gel coat. Placed that in, fiberglass there. Been good to me for the last five years. Eventually I'll get new leads. Coming back to the back deck here, uh, cooler. Normally I store my wet culling clips in here. Again, this here's another lid that was cracked. I made a temporary fix. Live wells, 
One big divided live well, got some pool noodles in there. As you can see, we got some carpet issues, but we'll address that here in a little bit. For storage back here, I got two big storage compartments. Uh, this one here, I normally keep all my soft plastics in. And then on this side here, this year, I'm going to have to find a different spot to put my life jacket and all my other miscellaneous stuff because in the Bassmaster opens, you need a uh, compartment just for your co-angler. In the battery compartment, we got a few things going on. Trolling more batteries, we're running three impulse lithiums, 60 amp, 12 volt batteries. Uh, if in the future, I plan on upgrading this to a 236 volt battery system, just so that way in case one does go bad, I still can finish out my day. This setup here is fine. I I haven't had any issues with them. I can usually get about three, di three solid days of fishing with this current setup. I thought the 60 amp batteries were gonna be a little small, but they've proven to be more than capable for my use. For our battery charger, we're using a NOCO Genesis Gen Pro 10x4. So that's 10 amps for four banks, four batteries. For uh, my electronics and whatnot, I've got a 120 amp impulse lithium battery. It's big, it's bad, it handles everything I need it to do. Handles all the electronics, all the accessories. And then I got my cranking battery is a X2 31 AGM. The only thing I got hooked up to that is the Optimax. So that way I don't have to worry about it needing to get constantly recharged. And then I got my, I have just enough room in here to put my power pole pumps for the blades in there as well. Again, I got to clean up and tidy up all this mess, rewire everything, so. So let's talk uh, some upgrade things that I want to do on this boat. One is definitely the carpet. I don't know if I want to go full sea deck yet or not. We're definitely going to do full sea deck in the cockpit, cockpit area. Just because that when it rains, it takes forever in this boat to dry. So another area that we're going to put sea deck in is we're going to rip all the carpet out in these rod boxes, put sea deck material in there. Uh, we talked about the wiring. We got all this wiring that we need to clean up. Not only for the switches, for the black boxes, for the electronics, but also back in here. Just want to clean that up. Other issues that we got to tackle this year is the bearings and braces need to get swapped out. I've never replaced them in the nine years I've owned this trailer. Probably a good time to do that since I'm taking it to Michigan and back a couple times here. We got new brake calipers that we need to install. Um, just because the ones that are currently on there do not work. So brake lines need to get done on this trailer. And that's the tour of my boat, everyone, that we're going to be competing out of for 2024 in the Bassmaster Opens and the foreseeable future. It's been a rock solid boat to me for the last nine years. And I don't believe I'm at disadvantage whatsoever fishing out of an older boat. I got a rock solid outboard that I know that is going to get me to my fish and back to the weigh-in. I got an electronic setup that's pretty comparable by most by most standards today. Um as I like to point out though to people every once in a while, it's not the boat or the electronics that you have, it's what's in here, the decisions that you make on the water, and your skills with the rod and reel that determine where you end up at the end of the day and at the weigh in. So hopefully you guys hit that like and subscribe, follow along as we tear into this boat and get ready for the 2024 season. Till then, we'll see you later. I see